Welcome to week Gen C. For we saw young adults in the Northwest. And their careers in a post-pandemic world. Fancy yourself a successful entrepreneur? We talked to local star entrepreneurs finding out how they got to where they are. And what they learned along the way. Hello, Evan Stewart. I am Dervla. How are you today? I'm not too bad, Dervla. Thank you. How are you? I'm great, thank you. So I'm going to be asking you some questions about your business, ES Creative. Um, I just wanted to know who or what inspired you to start your own business? Um, so basically, ES Creative is a, a creative company, obviously it's in the name. Um, but we work in the performing arts, um, so I have a degree myself in musical theatre and professional dance. I went off to Burke College in London, um, but I grew up here in Straban, um, doing shows in Straban and Derry and Belfast and stuff. Um, and I just saw a gap in the market um, whenever I came home um, for professional level training. Um, so I decided to dive right in and try and relay some knowledge that I got from London. Very good, very good. And what sort of challenges did you face when you start, when you first opened your business? Um, so the first thing was, it was quite a saturated market um, in terms of like performing arts. And um, I'm sure you know yourself being from Derry, um, there's always something on the Millennium Forum until like, you know, there's a global pandemic. Um, but, and then it's the same in Japan and everywhere else as well. Um, and so many people have been here for so many years. So it was trying to find where I fit in the scheme of things and where my gap in the market was. So that was quite difficult as well as that. Um, I think being younger as well, I'm not anymore, I'm almost 28. So I feel like an A or an OAP. But um, when I first moved back, I was only about 22, 23. Um, and it was kind of trying to be taken seriously and given responsibility yeah. um, for jobs. Um, because whenever you're doing shows and productions and events, like you're dealing with thousands and thousands of pounds in a budget yeah. um, and people are going to pay you um, to make their show or whatever look good. And it was like, oh, can this 23 year old really do this in comparison to all these other people we've known for 20 years? A lot of pressure. Yeah, um, yeah it's not too bad though. It's fun. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. Um, so what was your biggest mistake that you made when you first started your business and what did you learn from it? Um, I think my biggest mistake was trying to fit in with everybody else. Um, so I was looking at people who had really good business models or people who were really successful. Um, I was trying to emulate what they had done or what they were doing um, to an extent, not out and out copying people, mm -hmm. but you know, um, even like my tone of voice on social media and stuff, which is where so much business is done now, so much advertising, like my tone of voice, I was trying to mimic them as opposed to yeah. myself, even but though they might have been. You to become a bit more comfortable with yourself and then you can, yeah. you, know, you don't have to mimic anybody else because yeah. you're very confident now, obviously. No, I just feel like when you're self-employed, um, a lot of the time, even if you're selling a product, no matter what type of business you're in, part of being self-employed is you are the product as well. Um, especially now with social media taking off so much, um, mm -hmm. people want to buy like the brand as opposed to just like a t-shirt or yes. like a dance teacher. Mm -hmm. Um, so because you are your own product, you kind of have to be comfortable with yourself and putting yourself out there. Yeah. And that's kind of your most unique selling point as well. Yeah. Um, and speaking so, yeah. of copying other people, who was your biggest role model kind of growing up and getting into this? Business. Um, it was really strange. So, in one of the reasons I started um, my business was I didn't realize being from Strahan and um, dancing and stuff. I I obviously knew there was a West End and stuff, but I didn't know how to get there um, yeah. or that I could get there. Um, and then eventually, I um, started working with another company, uh, Music Theatre for Youth, when I was younger. But they were based in Belfast, um, way over the east of the country. Um, and that's eventually how I found my pathway into a professional training college mm -hmm. um, and into the professional world of performing. But I suppose I didn't really have a role model as such. Yeah. Um, and not to be cringe, I don't want to be anyone's role model. Um, do not copy me. I'm not, I'm not great. <laughs> um, but I kind of wanted to make sure that people from here knew 
yeah that it was a viable path especially in the arts because so many people think of it as a hobby and it is and it's great but it can also pay really well yeah. um so i've actually set up another company as well over lockdown because i had nothing else to do oh, yeah. um, you may as well. um it's actually just launched this week it's called the ignite project cic follow us on instagram and facebook please thank you uh -huh. um but it is basically a youth training program um, for people in the Northwest region um, between the ages of 12 and 22 um, who might want to go into career in the arts or third level education in the arts. Um, so yeah, I kind of feel like I didn't have a role model in terms of trying to get into the business, yeah. but I want to provide yeah. other people as role models now. Yeah, well, it seems like you're fairly on your way with that. Um, what qualities do you think a business leader needs to have? Um, I think they need to be determined and I think they need to be personable. Um, people need to like you. Um, you don't need to like everyone, but everyone needs to like you. Um, and also I feel like a really important quality is the ability to pivot. Um, cause things do not go as you plan ever. Um, so you need to be able to foresee the problems, first of all, and then once confronted with it, like pivot on the spot and yeah. work out a way around it. Because even though when you're self-employed and running your own business, people kind of forget that you're still at the mercy of other people slash the universe. So um, you need to be able to pivot like in a global pandemic when everyone has to be locked in their house. And speaking of pivoting, how did you overcome any doubts in the beginning? that you may have had and I'm sure there was a lot lots of people telling you lots of different things. Yeah. Um I think it was a case of you just kind of have to have a bit of self belief and basically whenever I went away to Bird College, um it's it is university, it's a degree, but it is like ballet first thing at eight in the morning and you don't finish till like seven o'clock at night and there are no lunch breaks. Um so it's not really the uni experience. But um it was the fact that I kind of had slaved through three years of training, which were the best years of my life as well. But it was kind of just knowing that I know what I'm doing. Yeah. And I feel like you have to show people that you know what you're doing. And it's not necessarily showing off if you can back it up. Yeah. Um, so you just have to be really confident um, in your own abilities and then surround yourself with people who pick up the slack. So for example, I know that I'm really not good at social media, okay. uh, I'm pretty terrible. Um, I also, um, I'm not really good with like admin stuff um, and I overthink everything. So I have people that I work with and that um, I employ in my team and stuff mm -hmm. to fill those bases where I'm not so good. And I feel like that's really important um, as well. Going back to your previous question as being a business leader, you have to be able to know your weaknesses and then not necessarily get better at them, but find other people who are better than you and work with them. And what's something that you wish you knew before you started? I think I wish I knew how small the area is um, in terms of everybody knows everybody. Um, and it can get not territorial in a sense, but um, people People often want to support local businesses in the local area, uh, especially now with COVID and the pandemic. Um, it's a case of not everybody, like everybody's had their patch for so long. So whenever you're breaking in, you kind of have to squeeze yourself in between everybody. Um, and I didn't really expect that to happen. Like I kind of really naively thought, oh, I'll just start and yeah. we'll all work out and it'll be fine. Yeah. Um, and that was not the case okay. at all. Um, you had to be a little bit ruthless, maybe? Um, not necessarily. I actually think you should be nice. One of the best pieces of advice I was ever given was your talent only gets you in the room once. Okay. Um, meaning that like in an audition, in performing, or even like any business interview, like your talent gets you in the room once, but if they don't like you, you're not going to be in the room again. Um, so I kind of think try and be as nice as possible to as many people as possible because if you aren't someone else will come along that's a lot nicer yeah and is your business exactly how it was when you first imagined it or has it changed um 
it's actually changed loads. Um, so I expected to, you know, teach a few dance classes um, mm -hmm. and then have loads of free time. And that is not how it worked out. Um, Pre-pandemic, I was working seven days a week, um, mm -hmm. talking some, hour, some days were like 14 hour days. Um, I have clients in Strabane, Castle Derg, Oma, Dungannon, um, was about to go into Belfast um, to do a show before the pandemic hit. And pre-pandemic, I was teaching about 700 kids a week. Um, and that's not including like shows and stuff. And I've done so many events and stuff. And even stuff like this, yeah. like I did not think that it would take off the way it has. Yeah. Um, but it's great. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. And um, if you were to hire someone in your team, what would be the main thing that you would be looking for? Um, I want someone who is better than me, um, okay. not at the things I'm great at, um, because I think if you're hiring someone who is just as good as you or not as good as you at business or like talent wise or at a certain area of your business, then there's no point in hiring them. Um, there's no point in working with them because you can do it yourself. Um, so I think you need to work out your weakness. If I was hiring someone, um, I look at my weaknesses, look at my shortcomings and try and find people who can pick up the slack there. Yeah, um, that's quite a humble realization, I'd say. Um, <laughs> what would you say if, uh, what would you say are the top three skills needed to be a successful entrepreneur? Um, I'd say be innovative um, because if you're coming in to do something um, that someone else has already done, then there's no point in doing it um, because they've been doing it longer, they will be better at it. So be innovative, find a new way to do something. Um, I would say you need to be incredibly hardworking. Um, you have no life whenever you start your own business. Um, it is seven days a week, um, like all hours of the day and night. Um, so yeah, be innovative, be hardworking. And I would say probably just be like really realistic. Um, like I said, you need to recognize your own weaknesses, your weaknesses in your business, but also the strengths that you have. Um, and just kind of claim your space. Okay. Um, be respectful about how you go about it. But once you've got your space, like be proud of it and stand there. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Well, that all seems like it is working in your favour. Thank you so much for talking to me today. It was very nice to meet you. No problem. It was lovely to meet you as well, dear Blit. I hope that I gave some insight into the manic world of running your own business. Yeah, it was very helpful. Thank you very much. No problem.